guys, we are back in the parks at Disney's Hollywood Studios for more Halloween treats and fun. I'm Brittany, and this is Extra Magic Minutes. Ooh, we have been chosen. We're so excited to be back in the parks filming a video, especially at Hollywood Studios in our favorite spot right now. We actually haven't filmed a video at Hollywood Studios since May, if you can believe it, but there wasn't a lot going on. There's a lot of things that are going to be going on in the future, and we're gonna talk about that later in this video. They do have some Halloween treats that are only available in October, and I know the Disney YouTubers have moved on from Halloween, and we've been done with it since mid-September, but I have one more Halloween video to make, and it's this one. I love Halloween so much. I know we're all moving on to the holidays and that's what we're gonna be doing next. This is my favorite spot at Hollywood Studios to hang out on Sunset Boulevard, right outside Trolley Car Cafe, which is the Starbucks. I did get coffee and I got a pumpkin cream cold brew, which I have not had one yet this season. This will probably be the only one I have because I used to drink them all the time, but we just don't go to Starbucks that much anymore. I have an espresso machine at home that I love making coffee at home, but also I've been trying like different coffees around the parks from Joffrey's or other places. Anyway, I couldn't let the season go by without getting a pumpkin cream cold brew. Mm, good as always. I also picked up my absolute favorite treat at maybe any park, but definitely at Hollywood Studios. We got the carrot cake cookie from Trolley Car Cafe. This is two carrot cake whoopie pies with cream cheese frosting in the middle and it's $5.49. Carrot cake cookie is amazing as always. I think they do a really great job with the spice level in the cookies light and fluffy. The frosting today tastes a little bit more sugary than cream cheesy and I actually really love that you can see flecks of carrot in there but you can also see those golden raisins in there. I don't usually like a surprise raisin but in this case it really is nice in here. It adds like a different texture. If you come to Hollywood Studios you have to get the carrot cake cookie. It's in the Starbucks so if you can just go in there and grab a carrot cake cookie they're like in the display case. You don't even have to get coffee. It's well worth getting and it's huge but we will eat all of them. Let's head over to our favorite ride, Tower of Terror. The real reason we're going over there is because there's some new-ish Tower of Terror merchandise. Tower of Terror's 30th anniversary was over the summer, and they had a new merchandise collection. But since we're over there looking at the merch, we might as well go on the ride, since it's our favorite ride. is 120 minutes. One of the elevators is down. They just announced they're having technical difficulties, so the wait doubled. It was an hour, now it's two hours. So um, we're gonna go do something else, and then we'll just keep an eye on it, and hopefully we'll be able to go on today. But I can't wait two hours, that's really long. <laughs> that's so long. That's even scarier than the ride. A really long wait. to New York Rock and Roller Coaster because Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy closed on October 7th and it's going to be replaced by a villains show which I'm really excited about. We actually never got to see Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. We were like, oh, we'll see it at some point. We'll come and see it. And then it closed like right before the hurricane, so we totally missed it. I have a feeling the Lightning McQueen car is going to end up over at Magic Kingdom for the Cars Frontierland expansion refurbishment that's going to happen but they're gonna have a villain's show. It's gonna be hosted by the Magic Mirror, and I know Maleficent will be there, and that's gonna come out in summer 2025. That's right now what they've said so far, and uh, I love everything Disney villains, so I'm pretty excited about it. They have exclusive Muppet Pandora jewelry. Pandora jewelry money, but I love everything Muppet. Ta-da!
We are going to try to ride Tower of Terror sometime later today. We're just going to keep an eye on the wait time. I'm not going to wait two hours though. That's crazy. Maybe we'll go on Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway if that one gets lower. We'll see. We love both those rides, so we'll go on one of them, definitely. But uh, we decided instead we would stop and get a Halloween treat. So we're at Dockside Diner and we got this caramel apple milkshake, which is already a big mess. It's deteriorating as we speak, just falling apart. But it looks like it's going to taste good. Love caramel, love apple. So this is the caramel apple shake. It's caramel and green apple shake topped with whipped cream and Halloween chocolate bark, which is not here, with M&M chocolate candies. And it was $8.99. I don't think it has bark or candies, but it is caramel and apple. Let's taste it. Oh my God, this straw doesn't work at all. There were no spoons either, but the straw, I can't get anything. I'll just do this, I guess. It definitely tastes like caramel. I just don't think it tastes like apple, but it smells like it, so it's throwing me off because I smell apple, but I do not taste it. And it's the color of green apple. I think there was just caramel at the bottom of the straw. Let's try one more time. Oh, there's all the apple flavor. I think there was just a big blob of caramel in there, but the boyfriend did some magic, stirred it up a little bit. Now I really taste apple. It's almost more like ice cream or like soft serve ice cream than I would say milkshake but it's still delicious and it does taste like a caramel apple. Mm. And it was supposed to come with M&Ms and a chocolate piece on it. I'm not really missing those. I feel like that would have made it even more difficult to drink. It does not need chocolate at all. Caramel and apple is enough. And the whipped cream adds a little like lightness to it, which is nice. Just in case they don't have any spoons when you go, the best way to eat it is just to fix them up with a straw. It's much easier. The one thing I would say about all the shakes at Dockside Diner is that I think that they whip a lot of air into them because it's really lightweight, like when you pick up the cup. It's not really giving ice cream and it's kind of a weird consistency for shake. Like it's kind of sticky and gooey. I don't know, like it's sticking to the straw like that. But that doesn't mean it doesn't taste delicious. It does taste like a caramel apple. And it was supposed to come with a chocolate piece and M&Ms on it. I really don't think it needs that at all. That would have made it even harder than it already is to eat. I was actually thinking, I really wish I had french fries to dip into this shake. And then I was like, why am I thinking about that? And then I was like, oh, because it, it kind of tastes like a frosty. It has a frosty-like texture. Ooh, it's green, like them. Oh my God, they have a new Chuby shirt. I love it. It says winging it, winging it, and it has Chuby on it. And I love everything Chuby. I actually don't have the Chuby shoulder plush either, but their shirt's so cute. Oh my God, it's so windy today. I'll put it in front of me. <laughs> Another thing in the future of Disney's Hollywood Studios is a new version of the Little Mermaid show. It's going to be called The Little Mermaid, A Musical Adventure. And it was supposed to open fall 2024, but they just announced that it's being pushed back to summer 2025, which is kind of far from when they originally said. I don't know what they're possibly doing, but they did say they're gonna start work on the marquee soon. So they'll be taking down the old marquee, putting up a new marquee. And there's a little bit of concept art for the show. Other than that, we don't really know. It's gonna have Little Mermaid songs. I hope it still has puppets. I'm sort of wondering now, this is my huge speculation. I'm not the only one who said this, so I can't like claim it as my own idea, but it's not a definite, that maybe if we're lucky, they're gonna move the queue to this side where we are close to Walt, One Man's Dream. And then they'll make the front of the building, the back of the building, and they can make it part of Monstropolis and turn Animation Courtyard into Monstropolis. Wouldn't that be great? That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that's why there's such a delay on this show opening next summer now. When will the mermaids return? This poster is so sun bleached that it's almost in black and white. So I hope they're gonna replace that too because there's almost no color left. The sun took all of it. fitting, difficult to see, always in motion is the future. I think Yoda would say the opposite. Always in motion, the future is. Right? Maybe? Unless that's a direct quote and I'm just misremembering Star Wars, which would be awful. Terrible of me. The other major change that's coming to Hollywood Studios in a couple of years, well, 
maybe a few years or several, I don't want to lock it into a couple because I probably will be wrong, is that they're going to put a Monstropolis area at Hollywood Studios and they will have a door coaster. It's going to be the first suspended coaster at Disney World, which is so exciting. And people have wanted a door coaster forever, but also a Monstropolis, a Monsters Inc. land. I love Monsters Inc. so much. I love Mike Wazowski. Any little green guy, obviously, like little aliens, little Mike Wazowski. Anyway, I think that land is going to be so, so cool. But it's been a huge point of discussion, contention, concern for the Disney fans where this land will be because they showed two pieces of concept art at D23. One really looks like Animation Courtyard and one really looks like Muppet Courtyard, which is what the people do not want. We do not want Muppet Vision 3D going anywhere. It was one of the last projects that Jim Henson worked on. It was the first time they had a computer animated Muppet with Waldo. And there was tons of history there. So um, anyway, everyone loves the Muppets. That area should not change. Not to say that Animation Courtyard does not have its own interesting history. And I may have more nostalgia for this area than most because I used to work over here when I was in entertainment. And so I have a little bit of attachment to it. I had the coolest break room ever over here. And I guess that's a nostalgia for something that I will never see again. But I had to walk through the old animation studio to get to the break room. And so I feel like, oh, it's kind of a bummer that if they built out this land to be Monstropolis, they would lose the animation building that's back there. But it's not being used for guests. This is definitely a better option than Monstropolis. And a lot of the stuff over here is not even open or functioning at its main capacity or sort of like a temporary thing that stayed for a long time. For example, Star Wars Launch Bay actually used to be an animation experience, then they changed it to Launch Bay. But when they reopened after COVID, they didn't reopen the theater, they didn't reopen the store. The Disney Junior show that's over here has changed like 15 times. It used to be Bear in the Big Blue House. Now it's different, different Disney Junior characters all the time. And the other stores didn't open over here. So I feel like this area is the right area for Monsters, Inc to have Monstropolis. And also, you know, the Little Mermaid is a thing that's interesting, but wouldn't it be really cool if they were not super committed to the Little Mermaid idea, they could put a Monsters, Inc. musical in there and do, put that thing back where it came from, or so help me, so help me, so help me. I would like to see that. Put that thing back where it came from, or so help me, so help me. I just gotta cry. 65 minutes. I really wanna get on a ride today, but the weights are super high for everything. It's busy, but I think that is something that hopefully will be alleviated with having a new roller coaster and a Monsters, Inc. land. This park needs more stuff to do because the weights are always so high when we come here. So I'm just monitoring. Say anything that drops below 45, 30 minutes, we're going over there, we're gonna book it. But I'm hoping it's Tower of Terror. baby ghost. We're at ABC Commissary and we got the Ghost Cream Puff. It's sour apple custard filled cream puff topped with toasted meringue and a chocolate chip and it was $5.49 and it is absolutely tiny. It's so small. I can't believe it. I just put my hand next to it so you can see how small it is. It's like almost one bite. I don't even know how we're gonna share it. And it was $5.49, which is expensive. I don't know what it is with Hollywood Studios and Cream Puffs. Last video we filmed here, we got the Mustafari and Cream Puff and it was absolutely terrible. This one looks better. It has a nice crackling on top, some meringue on there, but it's, it's tiny. It's so small, I can't believe it. And it's another apple flavored treat. Hmm. Wow, what is that? That's the smallest chocolate chip I've ever seen. Ah, I didn't expect that. It looks like he's throwing up green stuff now. This is interesting because it's actually a very good cream puff. It is well made. The puff is really like has a nice puff on it and it's not soggy like I thought it would be. The, there's almost the same amount of meringue though as there is the cream puff so I wish the cream puff was bigger. The other thing is that it says it's sour apple flavored and I'm an expert on sour apple flavor now because that's all the Halloween treats are this year. So many sour apple things. Um, this doesn't taste like apple to me at all. It is the color of sour apple. It's a radioactive green, but it tastes like vanilla. I'm not upset at it. It's actually pretty good. I think the crackling has a nice crisp and the puff stayed really crispy too. It's really well made. So I got a little bit more of the mousse that time and it did taste like sour apple, but the flavor is pretty faint compared to all the apple things that we've had. Let's see, this is the least apple-y. I still think it's a really well-made cream puff. I just wish it was larger for the price or maybe they could give you like 
three little small ghosts for like seven or eight bucks. That would be okay too. What are you gonna grab even? Oh, this ghost has seen better days. I guess he's not really seeing much at all now. Should I eat the other one? shirt alien shoes even it doesn't say Andy it says Stan but that's okay I don't belong to anybody we stopped at Woody's lunchbox for the pumpkin lunchbox tart this is a pumpkin pie filled pastry tart with marshmallow fondant candy corn and Halloween sprinkles and it was $4.79 it's a little nuts over at the Woody's lunchbox right now because they have the whole seating area closed so you either have to show a mobile order or wait outside to get in the line just none of space and then they put tables over by galaxy's edge but there are people sitting everywhere tables ground over there but anyway i got this really portable easy to carry little lunchbox tart and i love the candy corns on there let's break it in half so we can see what the filling situation is like i kind of feel like i already know but oh it's so sad we never reviewed one of these on camera yet i have had them before because i just feel like if you're gonna be a tart, a lunchbox tart, or even like a pop tart kind of thing, like the lack of filling is always just so egregious and they're usually really dry. So I'm a little bit not looking forward to eating this, but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna be chewing forever because it's so dry. Mm. I think the dough on these is actually really good. They get a nice golden brown bake on it. It holds up really well, like it's not soggy on the bottom or anything. It has a great sugar flavor, almost like a sugar cookie. The issue is it just never has enough filling. It's not enough filling. I can tell that it, the pumpkin pie was like nearby, but it's not like the strongest flavor. The flavor is more like sugar cookie, frosting on the top. I haven't eaten a candy corn yet, but if I have a piece of the candy corn, I'll taste the candy corn. There's just never enough filling in these, please. They could be so good. Just put some more stuff in there. It'd be so much better. Hmm. 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 Now I need water. bumpier than I remember, but I haven't been on Alien Swirling Saucers in quite some time. They also played like a techno remix of When She Loved Me, which is the saddest song on earth. So that was a very interesting ride. We're sliding all over the place, but it was worth it. I'm in the Alien outfit. We did wait quite a long time, but uh, we wanted to get on something today, and I'm hoping that we can still get on Tower of Terror. Next, we're headed over to Backlot Express because they have a Halloween cookie over there. And also we need to eat some dinner, maybe something that isn't sugar. There's a salad over there, it's really good. The boyfriend says, thumbs up, something that's not sugar. I agree, actually, for once. I would like to eat some savory dinner food. So uh, let's go and walk over there. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -da -da. Strange thing. I love it over here. I hope the Muppets stay forever and they don't touch this area at all, except to add more Muppet to it. That would be amazing. We're at Backlot Express and I just wanted to prove to the world that I do eat things outside of desserts. I got my favorite salad probably from any Disney restaurant. This is the Southwest Salad with Chicken. 
It's romaine mixed with roasted corn relish and diced tomatoes topped with pickled red onion, roasted pumpkin seeds, cheese, and grilled chicken breast. And this is $11.99. And it also comes with a house-made jalapeno lime ranch dressing, but I usually get it without because it's a little bit spicy. And I think that Backlot Express is kind of overlooked. There's a ton of seats over here. They have some good food. They have like the usual burgers, chicken, but they also have this really great salad. So if you're ever looking for somewhere to eat, all the other places don't have any mobile order or they're really busy, come over to Backlot Express. They have the best salad. And we also got fries. And I got another dessert, but I do eat real food too. The final Halloween treat that they have at Hollywood Studios is at Backlot Express. It's the pumpkin patch cookie. It's pumpkin spice snickerdoodle topped with pumpkin spice buttercream and pumpkin candies. And it was $4.79. It has these big pumpkin candy corns, so that's pretty exciting. It actually looks pretty good. Hmm, that's actually pretty good. I had pretty low expectations because I thought it was just gonna be like, you know, a generic Disney cookie. What's really great is the frosting, I think. It really tastes like pumpkin spice, but it's really creamy. It's not like granulated at all. Texture is really good on that. Yeah, I think that's the easiest way to do it, really. Let's take a piece, because there's not frosting across the whole thing. I get it for aesthetics, but it would be nice if there was some frosting like on the edges. But I think the flavor really is good on that. And I think it's actually a pretty good snickerdoodle. I'm impressed. Ah, the bar was so low for you, Cookie, and you ended up great. The boyfriend also thinks it's really good, and he is a bigger fan of cinnamon snickerdoodle treats than I am, so. I'd say this is a, this is a, you should get this if you come here before Halloween. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is one other Halloween thing that they have. It's an alien sipper. He's dressed as Buzz Lightyear. And I was worried that he would sell out. So I actually bought him when I was here with my dad like a couple of weeks ago, like the first day that he was out. So I already have one. And I have a collection of alien popcorn buckets and they're all named after potatoes because they're the children of the potato heads. But I haven't named this new one yet. So if you have a potato themed name, that will be great for a Buzz Lightyear alien sipper. You should let me know in the comments. Now we're gonna try to go on Tower of Terror, which we've been trying to do, as you know, all day. But we also really wanna see Fantasmic. There was a show at eight and then there's one at 9.30. So we're hoping that we can squeeze Tower of Terror in before we go see Fantasmic. I don't know if it's gonna be possible. So we're gonna have to book it over there and see what's going on. We're gonna try though. to be fish swimming upstream because Fantasmic just got out so everyone is headed for the exit and we are headed towards Tower of Terror and uh, we actually decided we're just going to do Tower of Terror because we're definitely not going to get done with that in time to go to the second Fantasmic. We do have really great footage of Fantasmic that the boyfriend put together when we went to our after hours at Hollywood Studios so I'll put a link in the description. Maybe he'll put a little link somewhere around this video. we have to start with the ears. They do have a removable bow and they have a little service elevator thing that's like holographic so the dial moves. They also have some lightning on them, the towers on there. And these are lounge flight ears so I think they're probably $44.99. They don't have a price on them but that's usually the price for lounge flight ears. I think this shirt is kind of cute. It's $39.99. It has Mickey and Minnie in their tower outfits and it also has the Hollywood Tower Hotel, like a little logo for it. This is all for the 30th anniversary collection. It also has Donald holding a bunch of suitcases, which I think is so cute. I don't usually love the merch that has like Disney characters at Tower of Terror, but I don't know. I think this all over print is actually kind of cute. So maybe I'll make an exception for this one. I also love this shirt. It says out of order on the front and then Tower of Terror. The only thing I don't love about it is that the back has Stitch as a bellhop on it. For the Stitch lovers, I'm sure you love this shirt. I just don't associate Stitch with this ride. You know, like I just said, don't really love the Disney characters with Tower of Terror, but Mickey and Minnie have been part of the marketing forever. So it's like kind of okay, but Stitch is such a random addition. So I wish it was just the front of the shirt, but I always wear a backpack. So like I could still get this shirt and you'd never see Stitch anyway. This pullover is more my style because it's just Hollywood Tower of Terror doesn't have any characters or anything on it. I like how simple the front is, and I like the raglan kind of look. It's $49.99, which is less than I thought, 
but it's not like furry inside. It's sort of like more lightweight, maybe like a waffly kind of texture. And this might be something that I have to get because I love Tara Tara and I think this is really cute. And of course you can't have lounge fly ears and not have a lounge fly bag. This bag is cute because you can move the doors and open the elevator to have Mickey and Minnie there. And then on the back it says drop in any time. This one's 88 and it also glows in the dark. So I think all of the parts like this definitely glows in the dark because it has that feeling like it does maybe when you open this. There's two different lounge flies. One has Mickey and Minnie in it and then this one has Stitch Bellhop on it. What's he doing here? <laughs> this is a different bag. Stitch Bellhop inside the doors. Surprise. Oh, these doors are a little more heavy too. And I think these glow in the dark. And it has this holographic thing again where you move it back and forth to be zero or 13. And then on the side, it has Donald Bellhop again. This one, I, I might like this one better, but what's Stitch doing there? I don't know, it's still cute. so long, but I don't think it's going to be too scary. one of the best times, if not the best time we've ever been on Tower of Terror. We didn't wait super long. I thought it was gonna be a really long wait. It was only 25 minutes, but we got to sit in the front and it was so good. We got so much air time. I think they've like fixed up a few things too. They had the scorch marks back on the wall before you get into the library and like the little pre-show. I don't remember if there was that much lightning. There was a lot of lightning in there. And then the ride was just amazing. We haven't been on it in so long and it was so much fun. I also wanted to send a shout out to Sarah. Thank you so much for joining our Patreon. We had so much fun today. We had a lot of Halloween treats. We got to go on a couple of rides. It was really busy, but we still got to do what we wanted to do. The weather's getting cooler, which is so nice. I'm not sweaty anymore. It's amazing. We had a lot of fun today. Thanks so much for coming with us, and we'll see you on the next one.